Hi everybody, I'm Todd McKim and welcome to another edition of the Cal Sports Report. A lot of things going on this week. Football, of course, more on that a little bit later on, but the volleyball team and the women's soccer team open conference play. The women will face Arizona to start things off. And the volleyball team, a brutal four game stretch on the road to start conference play beginning Wednesday at Stanford and then on the road against Colorado Saturday next week at Arizona. Head coach Rich Feller will join us to preview the Pac-12 conference race. The men's soccer team continues its seven-game homestand. They'll be busy throughout the next couple of weeks, so make sure you get to Edwards Stadium to watch them play. And congratulations to the rugby squad. They went back to Columbus, Ohio, and won the Buckeyes Sevens, defeating Navy in the championship match. But we start first and foremost with football. The Bears a very tough loss on the road to the Buckeyes of Ohio State. Brendan Bigelow had two great runs for touchdowns. The Bears had a chance to take the lead late, but it was Ohio State they got the game clinching touchdown, and as a result, the Bears conclude non-conference play one and two. This week, though, conference play begins. It's an entirely different season, and the very first contest will be at the L.A. Memorial Coliseum Saturday against the USC Trojans. Both teams coming off road losses, but the Bears are very excited to face USC quarterback Matt Barkley and his outstanding receiver duo of Marcus Lee and Robert Woods. You have to minimize or try to eliminate the big play with those guys. They're, they're as gifted as any receivers around, without a doubt. Um, they're physical, they're fast, quick, elusive, you know, so they can catch a short one and make you miss and turn into a big play. Uh, you get up and try to get in their face, they can run by you. And, you know, obviously, it's not just the receivers, but Barkley's a quality quarterback, and they've been together, and and um, so they have great chemistry. You have to really hone down on your techniques. Um, as far as going against any wide receiver, you have to make sure you're um, flowing to the ball inside out. And then if you put um, somebody with a little bit more speed and a little bit more shiftiness, you really have to make sure you take the proper angles. Um, and as the same with defending a great passer and a quarterback, uh, you can't you can't be lackadaisical in your drops. You can't take wrong angles. Um, so it really comes down just it, it's the same every week. You, it comes down to your technique and executing your technique. I feel like we've been able to tackle very well, um, and I feel like that's going to be a main emphasis of uh, eliminating the big play, the big play offense. You know. Uh, with Robert Lee and Robert, I mean, uh, Marquise Lee and Robert Woods. Uh, they make plays in the space, so we just have to be great tacklers and everybody have to fly around, run to the ball. We'll face the same USC team we always face. You know, they're always motivated. They're always very competitive. Um, you know, they're, they'll, be, they'll be flying around, you know, like they do. They're athletic and physical in and, and every, you know, every position, really. And so, um, you know, I'm sure you know, coming off a loss, they'll, they'll, you know, as any time you have a resolve to, to work hard in practice and come back with more determination. So, um, you know, I have no doubt in my mind we're going to get their, their best effort. We're just going to have to come out and execute the game plan that uh, the coaches have designed for us. Um, and it's, it's really simple. It's just making the plays that are there for us, not doing too much. Um, not trying to make other people's plays, but um, executing our res individual responsibilities. You know, we have to just master our, their intensity, like I said, and we just have to be on our A game and uh, execute the plan, whatever we have going in for them, and just make sure everything is uh, set in stone and we're 100% locked in with each other. So for a number of the Bears, including starting center Brian Schwenke, this will be a trip down home. Schwenke hails from Oceanside, California, his final appearance in Southern California during the course of the regular season. He's one of the unique players in college football in that he has played since his true freshman year and more, I guess, miraculously in some cases here at Cal, he will graduate in just three and a half years. I took a lot of AP classes in high school and came out with some units, so that helped too. And just kind of staying focused and not letting class about a hand. Um, just kind of took care of that. It's a good, good environment here, the tutoring and everything. So it, it wasn't too tough, but it was, I'm glad I'm getting it done. 
Schwenke will make his 40th career start when the Bears visit the Trojans, most of those as an offensive guard. As a veteran who was named second team preseason Pac-12, he is one of the candidates for the Remington Award given annually to the nation's top center. After spending all of his career playing guard, the senior from Oceanside, California, now has one of the more important roles on the offense. In fact, no play can start until he's ready. As the hub of the O-line, he is responsible for not only snapping, but making all the checks for the guys up front. It was a challenge at first in spring ball last spring, and um, but it's gotten a lot better, and Coach Mahalachuk has really helped me out, and then no problem at all now. So I like, I like a little challenge, and so far, you know, we've had some pretty standard defenses, but, um, you know, I'm hoping we get to those defenses that kind of try to mess with me because that makes it a little more fun. In just three and a half years, he went from the newbie up front to the graybeard. Uh, it was really fun. Um, I, you know, a young little whippersnapper just running around trying to hit somebody, and um, I really enjoyed it. It, it definitely helped um, for my sophomore year. I had, you know, some experience under my belt and um, kind of knew what was going on. That that first year of playing is always like, no matter what year you are, you know, whether it's been two or three years before you've started, um, it's always a little little rough you're not you know as good as you want to be so getting that first year in as a freshman I think really helped me develop quicker you know we have a lot of guys who really want to play and are really excited about playing and uh, that's a good thing and um, you know Adcock and Jordan Rigsby the guys right next to me and they're really you know they're really into it and they really care so it's good to have those guys and um, you know they're all out there having fun and that's that's all it really that really matters is that they're having fun and um, because that means they're getting after it and doing well. Now as the curtain falls on his career, each game becomes just a little more important. There are just a few more memories to be made at Cal. And for this SoCal native, beating USC at the Coliseum would top that list. You know, I got a lot of family and friends coming out, so I want to, you know, I'm leaving here this year and I want to make sure that we beat SC this year. Um, you know, we got to do it and everyone knows that and we're, we're willing to prepare for that. and. I think it's going to be exciting. Joining us now is head volleyball coach Rich Feller. As uh, we head into conference play this week, the Pac-12 conference, and you start off uh, this week with two on the road, followed up by two more the following week as well. First of all, just give us your evaluation as you see the league shaping up as you start play this week. Well, there's a lot of teams playing some really good volleyball right now all over the conference, and I, I'm sure there's a, a big winning record uh, within the teams. There's some, been some big upsets already, Oregon State beating Penn State and Oregon having a great early run. Uh, Stanford's doing very, very well with a, a big recruiting class and a great talented team. And uh, I think it's going to be a real strong year with five teams that can win it and, you know, the other four that have a chance. So uh, it, I'm excited about getting conference started and having some normalcy to our order of play, if you could say that, with Wednesdays and Fridays and Sundays. But uh, we're kind of excited to get the conference started. Three teams as we speak now that are undefeated in non-league play, entering conference play, USC and two schools from the Northwest, uh, Oregon, you mentioned in uh, Washington as well. Uh, where do you see your team right now? I mean, you've had a, uh, a non-conference schedule where you, you never really had all your parts and your components yeah. together. Yeah, we're, we're still kind of a, a work in progress and our motto is a little bit better every day. Uh, some of the injured kids are coming back and able to practice a little bit more, but we're still monitoring a lot. Uh, I'm not really happy with the, the preseason the way it went. We would have liked to have a couple more wins and a couple less losses, but it's a long season still, and, and like I said, the Pac-12 kind of gets the juices going and, and having only two matches a week, knowing when they're going to be visiting cities that we're accustomed to and being at home every other week or so, I think that'll uh, affect a little bit of a change in our team, and we're looking forward to it. And your team has to start with four on the road. Two this week, Stanford, Colorado the following week against the Arizona schools. I mean, that's really a difficult way to start any yeah. league season, let alone the Pac-12 volleyball. It, it sure is. And, you know, with the, uh, the away match last Saturday night as well, so it's five matches on the road in a row. It's a real tough way to start. And fortunately, when we go for the flight, the first flight to Colorado, it's just a, just a single match. Um, but still, coming back, back to back like that, it's going to be tough. You know, academically it's tough, and on the wear and tear of the bodies it's tough. But it's the way it is. Uh, the following two weeks we're home, so somebody else hopefully has to travel two in a row. Well, we'll see what happens. That'll be an exciting conference season. Good luck this week. Thanks very much. All right, head coach Rich Feller as the volleyball team enters Pac-12 conference play. 
And, of course, next week the Bears will be back home to host Arizona State. It will be National Champions Week. One of those being honored is the defending NCAA champion in the 200 IM. Chelsea Brown has his story. Way to go, Bears! Results here in Federal Way, Washington, California at the head of the pack. They win the title. Describe what it was like to be with your team in that process, winning the national championship for the second year in a row. Yeah, actually when I watch the race, even now, my favorite part about it is just watching the stands, watching my teammates and especially our head coach, David Derwinch, like knocking on the banners by the pool. So just the moment when I touch the wall and I look at my teammates, everyone just like in euphoric, you know, just so happy that... Yeah, that was, that was definitely something that I remember for forever. How was it winning the NCAA record for the 200 medley? That felt amazing because just as I said before, like coming to this meet, we as a team were not expected to win. Nobody just thought we could win. And it kind of was the same with, my, with me. Like there was one guy from Stanford who was supposedly, who, who supposedly was, was supposed to win. But uh, yeah, by the end of the day, that was me. And I mean, I just scored a lot of points for the team and that's what mattered the most for me. When you're up at the blocks, ready to swim the 200 relay, what do you feel, what's going through your head? What do you try to focus on at the beginning of the race? Well, directly before my race, we had two amazing swim, uh, 200 freestyle re relay, and then Will Hamilton has had a great swim in 500 freestyle. So honestly, I was never so pumped and so ready to swim to just like race my heart out for, for the guys and for my teammates. I was just very excited to, to, I didn't even think what can I accomplish their race. I just wanted to score as many points as possible. Post the 2012 London Olympic Games, how does it feel to have the team back at Speaker Aquatics Complex training together? Uh, it feels very really good. I mean, I've been gone almost whole summer and I really miss the guys. I really miss the atmosphere that we have over here, this training environment. So yeah, that was pretty tough, tough four months with other guys. Certainly your team's success though is definitely not an easy route. What is a typical day for you guys? You wake up at the crack of dawn, correct? Uh, yeah, swimmer's life definitely isn't easy. So yeah, wake up usually at 5.30 in the morning, six o'clock morning practice, then go to school and one o'clock we have another practice at weights or here at the speaker pool. How are you looking as a junior and upperclassman to really continue your success and develop yourself as a swimmer? Uh, I'm just gonna keep doing what I've been doing in the past. Just I trust Dave, whatever his program is, and I believe that's that's the right direction for for me and my career. Marchin, thank you for your time, and I'm looking forward to see you shave off some more time in the 200 medley. Thank you, thank you. Thanks, Chelsea. Of course, we'll have the broadcast from the LA Memorial Coliseum beginning at two o'clock with the Toyota Tundra tailgate show, and then we'll have the kickoff on the entire Cal IMG Sports Network beginning slightly after 3 o'clock. So for Chelsea Brown, I'm Todd McKim. Thanks for joining us. Have a great week, everybody. This has been the Cal Sports Report on calbears.com.